Okay, well here we have another successful match, this time of Evan. And Evan is the very first name on that list. And it found a match on the very first try through the loop. Given that, given that we found a match on the very first try, do you think we really need to loop through every other item in the array and check them? We already found the name we're looking for. Why do we need to use up computing power to continue looping through this, this array? Well, if you want to break out of a loop, if you want to cause a loop to stop in the event that an if statement, for example, has been satisfied, it's very simple. You simply add a line called break, and this will cause the loop to immediately end. Now think about this for a second. The for loop is only going to reach this break line of code if this condition is successful. So if it has found a match, if the name matches, it will then do what it needs to do and break out of the loop. It will not waste time continuing to loop through the rest of the names if it doesn't need to. Okay, so let's see how this works. Reload, Just type in Evan again. We get Evan found a match and it stops. That's it. Okay, and what happens if I write Sam? It runs three times. Not all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. It doesn't run nine times, it runs three. As soon as it finds a match, it stops. Does not need to keep going. Okay, so that can be very, very useful, especially if you're dealing with huge, huge arrays or very big loops or lots of dense code. That can be a very useful technique for keeping your code, your console, everything concise and clean. Break will force a loop to end, and it is normally used under a certain condition. Okay, so that's looping through arrays. Now let's get into looping through more complex arrays, specifically arrays of objects. This is something that you're probably going to see a lot of and is a very, very common technique. I'm going to create um, another student's array, but this time, rather than just contain a list of names, it's going to contain a list of objects. So I'm just going to create a couple objects, get us ready. I'll just go for three for right now, three objects. These are going to be three students. <coughs> Excuse me. And each student is going to have a name property. Let's go with Evan. And um, a score property. Let's go for. And finally, and let's let's um, how about an is enrolled property, which is going to be false. Okay, so that's one student. That's one student object. This one is going to be Matt. Score of 97 is enrolled. True. And finally, we're going to have Courtney. Score of 100 is enrolled. Also true. Okay, we have three student objects. Let's see what that looks like in the console. students. Okay, so when I call an array of objects, the console actually condenses it for me. I see it, I see that it's an array, I see that it's got three objects, but I can't see what's inside them unless I expand it. And then it's going to show me object 0, object 1, object 2. Name score is enrolled. Three properties for three objects each. And I can even expand the individual objects and see the same information. Okay, So each object has a name score and is rolled, a string, a number, and a boolean, three objects in an array. I can access individual students, uh, student objects by typing in students at the zero index, students at the one index, students at the two index, etc. 
So let's just practice looping through this array of students, just like we did before. For if our i equals 0, i is less than, again, we're going to use students.length, i++. Plus plus. And let's start by just console.logging students i. And there we go. We get one, uh, one student object, one student object, one student object. Well, it's kind of messy. I don't like how objects look. Uh, they're very useful for JavaScript, but they're not very useful for reading. They're not very useful for natural language um, visual digestion. They're not very useful for users to your site who expect things to look nice and easily understandable. So let's see if we can, instead of console.logging the object itself, just log the name property. Um, and let's concatenate. Name property plus a space plus students i dot score plus a space plus students i dot is enrolled. Let's save, reload. And there we go. We get each property of the object concatenated and printed out in a way that's a little better. It's not great. <laughs> it's obviously not great. So let's see how we can format this a little bit more. Let me pull this out. Let's, let's, let's comment out this console log first. And we'll use a couple different commands. We're going to console.log student name colon space plus students i dot name. What do we have there? Student name, Evan, student name, Matt, student name, Courtney. Good. So far, so good. Then below that, we'll do it in a separate console log command. We'll do student, we'll just do score, or av how about average score, plus students i dot score. Reload. There we go. Student name Evan, average score 94. Student name Matt, average score 97. Student name Courtney, average score 100. And last, how about that is enrolled? How about that is enrolled? We don't want to, we could, we could of course do this. We could of course do this. Enrolled. Let's change this. Is enrolled. We could of course do that, but enrolled false is is kind of awkward. I don't like that. I don't like that too much. Let's try and convert that even into some more meaningful natural language, some more meaningful information. So I'm going to comment that out. I think I can delete this one for now. Let's actually check what enrolled is, okay? And we're gonna do that with an if statement. If students i dot is enrolled is true, okay? You can actually write this exact same thing by eliminating this. If students i dot is enrolled is gonna check if this is true automatically. And if you wanted to check if it was false, you could just write not here. That's the most concise way to write that. But I'm going to include the is equals equals true here just so we can be very clear on what's going on. If students i dot is enrolled equals equals true, then we're going to console.log student is enrolled. Else we're going to console.log no longer a student, no longer an active student. How about that? Okay, we should still have only three console log commands running for each student because is enrolled is either true or it isn't. It's never both and it's never neither. Okay, student name Evan, average score 94, no longer an active student. Student name Matt, average score 97, student is enrolled. 
Student name Courtney, average score 100, student is enrolled. Okay, so we have looped through an array of objects. We have accessed each individual property of each object and formatted it formatted that information in such a way that it is more meaningful to our users or even to us as the trackers of this data or what have you okay so looping through an object is it looping through an array of objects is no different than looping through an array of non objects you simply need to understand how to access properties within an object and for reference what you cannot do is loop through properties in an object which is to say properties in an object do not have an index objects do not have a length so a for loop logic doesn't work on a single object like that it does however work on an array of objects I mean, how long is students? What is the value of students.length? Hopefully, you've guessed correctly, and you realize that it's three. There are three objects, one, two, and three inside of students. We're looping through all three objects, and every time we come upon a new object, when i equals zero, this is our active object. We log student name plus Evan, average score plus 94. We check if is enrolled is true. It is not. So we run the else statement and we uh, log no longer an active student. Then i is added, uh, i is increased to 1. We run the loop again. This time we're looking at students at the index of 1. So we're on the mat object and we log student name Matt, average score 97, is enrolled is true, so we log student is enrolled. Then we add one to i, the i equals two, we're on the Courtney object, student name Courtney, average score 100, is enrolled is true, so we log student is enrolled. Then we add one to i, i equals uh, three, and three is no longer less than students.length. 3 is no longer less than 3. This statement evaluates to false and the for loop ends. Okay, I know it feels like a lot, there's a lot of moving pieces here, but do not let the fact that we're suddenly dealing with objects confuse you about looping or about arrays. They're exactly the same except objects have these very easily accessible properties.